Good morning, it's Rachel from Central Texas Zone 8B. I'm out at the property garden and I don't know if y'all remember the video where I planted up a rose hedge all along this back in these raised metal containers. Um, after I did that, you know, of course we had the, the big drought summer um, and like no rain for forever and I was hand watering them. I didn't have this long hose, I don't know if you can see it set up yet. I hadn't bought a big long hose, which is kind of silly of me. Um, so I had to carry hand carry water um, and uh, watering cans over to these roses to try to keep them alive. And I just ended up giving up at some point because there were so many plants everywhere for me to try to water and I couldn't keep anything alive. Uh, so I had to kind of uh, let those uh, just kind of be on their own. And so I ended up losing four of them. Um, four were still alive. I just actually recently lost a third one. I guess the stress from the, the summer was just didn't, uh, it was kind of slower to show or something, uh, because I have been watering it. Um, but it just, for some reason, kicked the can. Uh, again, we haven't had any rain since the beginning of September, which we got a good amount of rain then, uh, but then we haven't had anything since. So I'm going to uh, plant some full sun, you know, fairly drought tolerant plants um, in some of these areas. I'm not going to replace them with roses. I may replace one with ro uh, one of the roses because um, I really like the blooms on that one. But for now, I grabbed a, uh, I used the uh, brand, the Lone Star Growers. Uh, they grow, you know, kind of, Texas hardy plants. Um, this is an Indian Hawthorne Bay Breeze and it gets four to six feet tall. Uh, oh, sorry, four to six feet wide and two to three feet tall. And I'm going to plant this. It's going to be in part shade. And even though it says to plant in full sun, um, I'd, uh, I find that full sun plants here in Texas, even if they say they're for Texas and stuff, just do better with a little bit of break uh, from the Texas sun. Next, I have another um, uh, Texas Sage. This is the green cloud one, again, full sun. I have those over there as well. Um, so these two are going over there. And then let me grab the other one I have here. Oh, let's see, it's out of shot. Now, this one I've had for a, a while, and you can see that the end I let get crispy. This, uh, over the, this was sitting on my back porch all through the um, summer, so it's been on my porch all year, but it's a Hollywood uh, juniper, and it, I'm going to plant it in part shade uh, to full sun and see how it does. So this one I managed to bring back. <laughs> it was in the process of dying, and then I kept watering it extensively until it finally started to, like, the, I should say, it didn't green back up. This isn't going to re-green, but um, it, the, at least the spread of the brown stopped. <laughs> Um, I think it's still a little underwatered right now, but, um, anyhow, so I'm going to plant these and then I have blue bonnets to add out here and I have a, that I'm going to add over that way and the, in the more gardeny part now on this, this side hedge here. Then I have a, um, crepe myrtle called Lunar Magic. Um, and it has the dark purple foliage. I'm going to add that to the garden. This is another of the uh, sages. It's the Silverado sage. Uh, it is obviously a little worse for wear. <laughs> Again, my fault with the either watering too much when it's sitting in a pot or watering too little. Um, this one only gets about four feet tall by like four feet wide. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to stick that just yet. Uh, and then I have a bunch, uh, or not a bunch. I have three of these guys. These are the rock rose. I got them on sale. Um, they're still, you know, alive. This plant's pretty hardy. So anyhow, I'm going to stick that in my little patch of rock rose, uh, that I have going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I think in the future, another thing I'm going to add to this wall over here is either, um, I'd like it to be evergreen things. Um, I know roses generally, they drop their leaves in, in Texas here in winter usually. Um, so I want to intersperse with some evergreen pieces. So we'll see 
I'll, I'm going to put some thought to it and, and think about adding two more plants aside from these or something like that. Um, I haven't quite decided just yet what I'm going to put out there or over there. Uh, but I'm going to get to planting all these things and you can see where I put them. Um, and yeah, all right, I'm going to get started. Okay, so I'm going to throw a little bit of the root blast in every hole that I dig. Um, if I, I'm almost out of this, so I may have to use the Bioton starter fertilizer, um, which is fine. I do think I like the root blast a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Is just the, the soil should all be pretty loose already since I just filled these this year. Um, and then I'll throw in a handful of, of the root stimulator fertilizer stuff, and I probably won't throw any um, regular fertilizer in there just because uh, it's, you know, winter time or about to be, it's fall, so it's about to be winter and I don't want them to put on a ton of new growth. I just want them to establish their root system right now. So that's what my process is going to be. I've got the uh, Hollywood juniper here, the hawthorn, uh, and in between because I have a rose bush here that's still alive and then another one on the other side and then on the far ends I have the green cloud um, Texas sage so gotta get those put in here So this rose was the Star of the Republic that I just dug up and it was pretty sad because it actually had quite a few good tap roots down and the root ball was pretty large. So it's pretty sad it didn't make it. It obviously was working on establishing itself really well, even during the, the drought and then it just kind of couldn't keep up with it anymore. So I were... I'm gonna put water in the bottom of the hole so that um, that way I don't have to like water crazy thoroughly. At the, there's already water at the base of the plant, so. All right, so this one that didn't make it is the Belinda's Dream. Which Belinda, the Belinda rose is, there's several, there's a climbing version, uh, and then there's several uh, kind of variations of uh, different um, colors of pink. Uh, I have a climbing uh, Belinda's dream, I believe. So I'm surprised this one didn't make it because this one's a pretty uh, well-known one that does well here in Texas. Uh, and it does get part shade, so I'm a little surprised this one kind of kicked the can compared to some of the other ones, like that one down there, which gets more sun, but is one of my biggest bushes of the roses. It's done the best. So, um, anyhow, it's kind of a, sometimes it's kind of a crapshoot as to what <laughs> makes it. Let's see here. Let me see how big the root ball is on this one. Let's pull back the, uh, mulch here. Again, there's some good uh, established roots in there I'm having to break through. I really do think that these roses would have done great if it hadn't been for that huge drought we had. So they just had a chance to really establish themselves. They would have been really beautiful. Um, so I'm pretty sad that they didn't work out. Yeah, some really good roots that got put down. So. Okay, so the last one I'm planting on this head, this hedgerow today is this uh, um, Texas uh, Ranger. I am going to replace the one right uh, behind this uh, with another rose because right now I have it rose, a different type of plant, rose, a different type of plant, rose, a different type of plant, 
So I'd like to continue that down and have another rose. Uh, I'll replace with one of the varieties I, I bought for this, um, this hedge. Um, and then I'll, for the last one on the end there, um, I'll pick some other kind of thing either. I don't, I, I know that I love desert willows, but they're not evergreen. So I, I'm trying to think of something evergreen, open to suggestions. So let me know if you'll have any good ideas, something I'd like it to be at least five feet tall. I know one of the plants I planted wasn't, but that it has bushes behind it. Um, the hawthorn doesn't get that, that tall. Um, this rose bush is the Mrs. R.B. Cant, which is really beautiful. I may buy this one again to plant <clears throat> on the other side of this, just because I love this rose so much. Um, it's a really beautiful rose. Um, so, We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to do some research or I may pull a rose. Uh, one of the rose bushes I planted in the main garden actually gets really big. I think it gets like six to eight feet tall. So I may move that one over here in the winter. We'll see. But I do love the uh, the pictures I've seen of the, the RB Cant rose is just really gorgeous. I think I think if I'm remembering correctly, it's this kind of fat cabbage rose and it's kind of this maroon color, I believe, or like kind of wine color. Um, just super gorgeous. So anyhow, so I'm going to go ahead and get this Texas sage in here. And if y'all can offer any suggestions for that um, back, uh, very back one, the last one, uh, container, uh, uh, plants, planter, I would appreciate it. Again, something um, five feet or taller would, um, that's evergreen, would, is kind of what I'm looking for. So yeah, if you have any, any ideas of something that'll work well there, let me know. It does get um, full sun and it has to be drought tolerant. So, now this one did not have any, there's no tap roots here. This one didn't put down any. So, this one sh seems like it struggled right from the, the get go. Okay, so I apologize that the lighting's not so good over here. Here is my bank of rock rose. I'm gonna add these three rock rose plants to this. I think I'm gonna plant the Silverado sage in this little red metal planter over here, and then I can always underplant it with some something or other. Just randomly decided to stick it there, really, because that's that's what most of my gardening decisions are. Quite, they're like. I generally have like a plan, but I generally don't go with the plan, but it just kind of helps to slightly structure things for me. I'm pretty random. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, I, I'm a little bit of planned and a little bit of random, so, um, or a lot of random and a little bit of planned, something like that. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to put these uh, rock roses here, so I'm going to get to it. bulbs in here so I'm going to try to be careful uh, they're uh, lily bulbs I want to try to be careful not to damage them as I'm digging Please. gonna plant the blue bonnets around here I decided again last minute random decision reason this uh, this peppermint smoothie um, Althea did not uh, make it it's a Rose of Sharon it didn't make it I don't know why it does have drip to it the drip does work uh, I'll have to look into it it might have just so I'm gonna replace it with this black diamond pink myrtle that's called lunar magic
Okay, so that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it and hopefully these plants will live. I have killed way more plants than I've ever bought, <laughs> it seems, but um, I'm ever hopeful, ever hopeful. <laughs> okay, bye guys.